Hey, we're in Genesis chapter 46 and 47, the contemporary English version. Uh, finally, we see the reunification of Joseph and his family. Uh, we're going to see a dad who thought his son had died, uh, see his son again, and um, see a family that comes together. Um, and maybe there's a some for well there's just forgiveness on joseph's part uh and some honesty from his brothers uh but then throughout this whole thing we see god having a purpose he he knows what's going on uh throughout the whole process so uh, let's go ahead and get in the reading uh and see what happens genesis chapter 46 Jacob packed up everything he owned and left for Egypt. On the way, he stopped near the town of Beersheba and offered sacrifices to the God of his father Isaac had worshipped. That night, God spoke to him and said, Jacob, Jacob, here I am, Jacob answered. God said, I am God, the God your father worshipped. Don't be afraid to go to Egypt. I will give you so many descendants that one day they will become a nation. I will go with you to Egypt, and I will lay, later I will bring your descendants back here. Your son Joseph will be at your side when you die. Jacob and his family set out for Beersheba, from Beersheba and headed for Egypt. His sons put him in the wagon that the king had sent for him, and they put their chill, small children and their wives in other wagons. Jacob's whole family went to Egypt, including his sons, his grandsons, his daughters, and his granddaughters. They took along their animals and everything else they owned. When Jacob went to Egypt, his children were, who were born in northern Syria also went along with their families. Jacob and his wife Leah had a total of 33 children, grandchildren, and great-grandchildren, but two of their grandchildren had died in Canaan. Their oldest son, Reuben, took his sons Hanok, Palu, Hezron, and Carmi. Their son, Simeon, took his sons Jemuel, Jamin, Ohad, Jachin, Zohar, and Shaul, whose mother was a Canaanite. Their son Levi took his sons Gershon, Kohath, and Merari. Their son Judah took his sons Shelah, Perez, and Zerah. Judah's sons Ur and Onan had died in Canaan. Judah's son Perez took his sons Hezron and Hamul. Their son Issachar took his sons Tola, Puva, Jashub, and Shimron. Their son Zebulun took his sons Serid, Elon, and Jalil. Their daughter Dinah also went. Jacob and Zilpah, the servant woman Laban had given his daughter Leah, had a total of 16 children, grandchildren, great-grandchildren. Their son Gad took his sons Ziphion, Haggai, Shuni, Esbond, Eri, Arodi, and Areli. Their son Asher took his sons Imna, Ishba, Ishvi, Ishvi and Bariah, who took his sons Heber and Malkiel. Sarah, the daughter of Asher, also went. Jacob and Rachel had 14 children and grandchildren. Their son Joseph was already in Egypt, where he had married Esenath, the daughter of Potiphera, the priest of Heliopolis. Joseph and Esenath had two sons, Manasseh and Ephraim. Jacob and Rachel's son Benjamin took his sons Bela, Becher, Ashbel, Gera, Naaman, Ehi, Rosh, Muppin, Huppin, and Ard. Jacob and Bilhah, the servant woman Laban had given his daughter Rachel, had seven children and grandchildren. Their son Dan took his son Husham. Their son Naphtali took his sons Jaziel, Guni, Jezer, and Shilam. Sixty-six members of Jacob's family went to Egypt with him, not counting his daughters-in-law. Jacob's two grandsons, who were born there, made it a total of 70 members of Jacob's family in Egypt. Jacob had sent his son Judah ahead of him to ask Joseph to meet him in Goshen. So Joseph got in his chariot and went to meet his father. And when they met, Joseph hugged his father around his neck and cried for a long time. Jacob said to Joseph, now that I have seen you and know that you are still alive, I am ready to die. Then Joseph said to his brothers and to everyone who had come with them, I must go and tell the king that you have arrived from Canaan. I will tell him that you are shepherds and that you have brought your sheep goats cattle and everything else you own the king will call you in and ask what you do for a living when he does be sure to say we are shepherds our families have always raised sheep if you tell him this he will let you settle in the region of goshen joseph wanted them to say this to the king because the egyptians did not like to be around anyone who raised sheep 
Joseph took five of his brothers to the king and told him, My father and my brothers have come from Canaan. They have brought their sheep, goats, cattle, and everything else they own to the region of Goshen. And then he introduced his brothers to the king, who asked them, What do you do for a living? Sir, we are shepherds, was their answer. Our families have always raised sheep, but in our country, all the pastures are dried up and our sheep have no grass to eat. So we, your servants, have come here. Please let us live in the region of Goshen. The king said to Joseph, it's good that your father and brothers have arrived. I will let them live anywhere they choose in the land of Egypt. But I suggest they settle in Goshen, the best part of our land. I would also like for your finest shepherds to watch over my own sheep and goats. Then Joseph brought his father, Jacob, and introduced him to the king. Jacob gave the king his blessing, and the king asked him, How old are you? Jacob answered, I have lived only uh, 130 years, and I've had to move from place to place. My parents and my grandparents also had to move from place to place, but they lived much longer, and their life was not as hard as mine. Then Jacob gave the king his blessing once again and left. Joseph obeyed the king's orders and gave his father and brothers some of the best land in Egypt near the city of Ramses. Joseph also provided food for their families. The famine was bad everywhere in Egypt and Canaan, and the people were suffering terribly. So Joseph sold them the grain that had been stored up, and he put the money in the king's treasury. But when everyone had run out of money, the Egyptians came to Joseph and demanded, Give us more grain. If you don't, we'll soon be dead because our monies are gone. If you don't have any money, Joseph answered, give me your animals and I'll let you have some grain. From then on, they brought them their horses and donkeys and their sheep and goats in exchange for grain. Within a year, Joseph had collected every animal in Egypt. Then the people came to him and said, sir, there's no way we can hide the truth from you. We are broke. We don't have any more animals. We have nothing left except ourselves and our land. Don't let us starve and our land be ruined. If you'll give us grain to eat and seed to plant, we'll sell ourselves and our land to the king and we'll become his slaves. The famine became so severe that Joseph finally bought every piece of land in the Egypt for the king and made everyone the king's slaves except the priests. The king gave the priests a regular food allowance so they did not have to sell their land. Then Joseph said to the people, you and your land now belong to the king. I'm giving you seed to plant, but one fifth of your crops must go to the king. You can keep the rest as seed or as food for your families. Sir, you have saved our lives, they answered. We are glad to be slaves of the king. Then Joseph made a law that one-fifth of the harvest would always belong to the king. Only the priests did not lose their land. The people of Israel made their home in the land of Goshen, where they became prosperous and had large families. Jacob himself lived there for 17 years before dying at the age of 147. When Jacob knew that he did not have long to live, he called in Joseph and said, if you really love me, you must make a solemn promise not to bury me in Egypt. Instead, bury me in the place where my ancestors are buried. I will do what you have asked, Joseph answered. Will you give me your word, Jacob asked. Yes, I will, Joseph promised. And after this, Jacob bowed down and prayed at the head of his bed. So we see uh, several things happening in, in this story with uh, Joseph and, and Jacob and how God uh, was blessing them and what had taken place and that God's had his hand in everything. But I want to show you a little bit of what's going on so you can get a picture of it in your, um, in your mind uh, of what's taken place uh, up in this area is where uh, Jacob and his family are living, the northern part of Canaan. This is Canaan, this whole area uh, here. So when they leave to head to Egypt, they stop here in uh, Beersheba. This is, a, this is a famous spot in the Old Testament. This is where uh, Jacob's great this is where his grandfather, uh, Abraham, and Abim King Abimelech uh, made a, a pact, uh, an agreement not to, to attack each other at, at a well here. This is where Jacob's father, uh, Isaac, uh, reopened the well that had been closed and, and did an altar to God. So this is where they stopped on the way. And this is where, as we read today, Jacob, uh, God spoke to Jacob in, in a dream about seeing Joseph. Down here is Egypt, all this area. This is all Egypt uh, in this land uh, all the way down.
Uh, this, though, is where um, Joseph is living in this area with his wife and his two sons that we know of. Uh, so that's where Joseph is at. And here is the land that of Goshen. Goshen is in this area. And this is where Jacob's and his family, you know, it says 70 of his members of his family and everything uh, settled. Now, this is why this is such good land. Look at, you have the Nile River right here, but look at all these rivers feeding into the Mediterranean Sea. And so this land here is going to be so fertile uh, for them to be able to do their crops. And the king of Egypt, uh, the pharaoh of Egypt, just gives it to them. And so uh, it is an awesome opportunity for, for them. Um, to be able to to live and to grow and we're going to find uh succeed quite well in what takes place so that's that's a little history behind genesis chapter 46 and 47 and we'll hit the rest later on hope you have a great day